promised to get the um, My name's Tim Oberg, I'm the National Manager of Parkrun here in Australia, uh, as I said earlier. I'm really pleased Richard asked uh, me to come today uh, to, to present to you guys and tell you a little bit about what we're doing with Parkrun here and around the world. Uh, and I'm really lucky I've got some of my uh, event directors here as well that I'll, I'll talk about as we get going. So, uh, who's uh, not heard of Parkrun? Any takers? A few people? Maybe a few people quite shy? A few people in the room? Well, great. So, look, Parkrun, basically, we organise free weekly timed five kilometre runs all over the world. Um, so it's really quite straightforward what we do, in theory. Uh, our mission is to, is, is to do just that, so to provide a free weekly time, five kilometre running or walking event to every community that wants one, thereby increasing participation in running and sport. Um, one of the key things there is every community that wants one. Now, I don't, what that means is I don't sit in, in an office on the Gold Coast and go, we're going to put a park run in uh, Hobart, because that's not for me to say. I actually wait for people to contact me and they say, hey, I live in Hobart, I've heard about park run, I love running, I want to contribute to the community, how do I go about setting up a park run? So it's a bottom-up organisation rather than a top-down. So park run started in the UK in uh, 2004, uh, in October, so we've just had our eighth birthday. Um, and it was originally set up by a guy called Paul Sinton Hewitt, who is still the, the, uh, the godfather of parkrun, I guess you'd say. Uh, he was a frustrated, <coughs> injured marathon runner. He was about a 2.45 marathon runner, so pretty good, but he, he, was, he was told he wasn't going to be able to run for about 18 months because of a severe <coughs> uh, Achilles issue, and he wanted to stay involved with running. So he set up a thing called UK Time Trial, or UKTT, which he originally planned was going to be a hit out for elite runners to come down to Bushy Park in, in, in West London and, and have a bash uh, on a 5k track every week. But it very quickly evolved into a community event rather than this elite uh, service that he thought it was going to be. Now, uh, there's currently 180, uh, roughly 180 parkrun events around the world. There's always new ones starting up, so I never can keep, can keep track. Um, and well over 350,000 registered parkrunners. Um, I was living in the UK for 10 years and uh, at the end of 2010 I met with Paul and said I wanted to bring Parkrun to Australia. Uh, so, and, that, and that's what happened, what's happened. Uh, I live on the Gold Coast and so we established the first Parkrun at Main Beach on the Gold Coast in April 2011. Uh, and there's now 11 events around the country, uh, over 12,000 registered runners. Again, those numbers just keep going up you know, on a daily basis so I, I don't really keep track. Um, we're launching another seven in the next uh, couple of months. So it started off quite slowly, as, as these things do, and now it's really gaining a lot of momentum. Um, how does this happen? It's a free event. Well, of course, it happens with uh, the support of sponsors, and Adidas is our major sponsor, and Suncorp Bank, and Stockland as well. And, and Ron Clark is our national patron. So where are we? Well, uh, looking at Queensland on the left, we've got a real... Uh, uh, a high amount of park runs there, and this is also including the ones that are launching in the next couple of months. So, Coomera, the northern Gold Coast, Kiwana, which is Sunshine Coast, uh, Kira on the Gold Coast, Main Beach on the Gold Coast, New Farm in Brisbane, uh, North Lakes in North Brisbane, South Bank in Brisbane, and Wynnum on the bay side of Brisbane, uh, launching in Launceston in a couple of weeks, Gin and Derrick in Canberra, Kingscliff this Saturday, uh, Newey in Newcastle, St Peter's uh, in, in Sydney, Albert Park. Melbourne, uh, Ballying Sanctuary in Geelong, and Facebook Cove in Perth. So Adelaide's missing, uh, you might notice that, uh, but we, we will be launching Adelaide uh, very early next year, more than likely. Uh, and so there, as I say, because we launched, we started on the Gold Coast, there's a really uh, strong density of park run in South East Queensland, but that will uh, change over time as well as we start to grow more and more around Australia. Does anyone want to guess as to what the fastest growing Park run is in Australia at the moment. None of, none of you three can talk. Yep. No. No. Yui. 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 Very good. Yep. Newcastle. 360 last time. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the event in Newcastle launched uh, only maybe three months ago, and it is just growing off the face of the planet. So uh, Newcastle is obviously a hotbed for for runners here in Australia. So um, park runs really easy to join. 
essentially, we've tried to break down all the barriers that exist to, to people getting involved with running. Okay, so it's free to, free to join, as you say. You sign up online, parkrun.com.au. When you do that, you get emailed a barcode, and that becomes your parkrun athlete ID. Russ touched on that before. Um, you never, ever, ever have to go on a computer again if you don't want to be involved with parkrun. Um, you can just turn up at any parkrun event on a Saturday morning anywhere in the world with that barcode, and you can participate and you will get your time emailed to you at the end of that because when you cross the line we scan your barcode um, and then we also scan a position barcode that says where you came uh, and so you'll then uh, within the next couple of hours when the event director's done the results you'll get an email saying hey well done this is your time this is your place this is if it's a PB or not and then you can click on a link that takes you further into your athlete uh, I guess history if you want to see charts and how you compare to other people your age and so on so, as we were just touching on about results, if results and data is your thing, Parkrun massively provides. Uh, all of the IT team for Parkrun in the UK all love their stats. So there's, uh, there's plenty of that going on. But if you just want to turn up and walk with your dog, you can do that as well. So it caters for everyone. Um, you can be uh, any age. As I say, you can, you can walk with your dog, you can push your pram. All of those things we try to be as inclusive as possible. Um, we don't reward winning at parkrun, we reward uh, your participation. So if you're a junior runner, uh, you've done 10 parkruns, you get a junior t-shirt. Uh, it's called the 10 Club, uh, provided by, by Adidas. And if you are an adult and you do 50 or 100 or 250, you also get a shirt uh, presented to you. So we reward your participation, not the, not the winning as such. And we never really use the word race at parkrun, we always refer to it as a run. Although we do know that the people at the front, they're racing, so you know, that's, that's fine. Um, we have an annual points prize as well, which is all based on uh, your points for participating and for volunteering. You get awarded points. Uh, as I said, the bottom standard social media things, uh, you know, we're, we're all over Facebook, we do the, the, the newsletter every week. The results email has a 98% open rate. People always want to know what they do, and the newsletter has a very high open rate as well, which is quite rare these days, as I'm sure we all know. So there's our Facebook page. There's a great man uh, in the middle there, Ron Clark. Uh, we're on YouTube as well. So we recently, uh, Adidas came and filmed a video for us uh, at the, at the uh, first birthday of our New Farm Park Run event. We had 390 uh, runners turn up. Uh, we had all our sponsors there, and Adidas uh, made a great video which had about 1,500 views in the first week. So for us, that was, that was big. So we were pretty happy with that. Now, I guess where it gets interesting for you guys is, is how, do, how does uh, Parker have an impact on, on the broader running community? And our, our events themselves are, are highly sustainable in that they're run by volunteers. The equipment that we use is pretty minimal. Uh, we try to keep it as simple as possible. So I always say to my event directors, you know, we don't want to have too many signs because it's just more things you've got to put up and pack up. Uh, we want to keep the courses as safe and as simple as possible. And our actual timing equipment and so on, it's, it's our own system that's been developed by our own programmers, and it's pretty basic. Everyone starts on zero, so you can never use us to qualify for the Olympics. Um, but it is all uh, pretty straightforward. Um, <coughs> what's, as I say, what's interesting is, is really this part here for, for everyone in the room here today. And that's that we're in no way at all trying to replace paid running events. And if anything, it's absolutely the opposite. We're all about bringing people into running and then feeding them to you. Uh, and we've done a lot of research on this in the UK. We, had a, we did a study of, uh, I think, about 3,000 of our parkrunners. And 75% 70, uh, who had never run before coming to parkrun have then gone on and done paid races. So it really is all about bringing people into running. They might start off by walking, doing walk running, and then running. And they don't mind doing that because they haven't paid to be there. If you pay to go on a run, you feel like you have to run it, so you might not do it if you can't run. But if you're a walker or someone who's just starting off on a weight loss program or whatever might be the case, then you can come to park run, walk, run, whatever it might be, and then think, you know what, I've done, I've done a 5k now, I've achieved that first goal. And it might only be 5k in 50 minutes, but they might think, I'm now going to do the 5.8k at the Gold Coast Marathon. Uh, or a 10k or so on. So we really are all about supporting uh, run, running events and running clubs. So if you've got a running club, come down to Parkrun and let people know they can join your club outside of Parkrun. So as I was saying before, we keep our equipment pretty simple. It's all in-house. We have a scanner that scans the results. 
Uh, we have a, a stopwatch uh, that creates a data file for the time. It all gets linked together by our own software at the end of the run. It costs us about $10,000 to set up an event. And we try to, we obviously have our sponsorship and also we work with local councils and health authorities and so on to try and get grant funding as well when we set up. Um, if, if there isn't any grant funding available locally, we, still, we always still try and set up. We, we, we never said no to a park run yet. Um, but as the demands are increasing, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of requests for events now. It may get to a time where if we don't have that grant funding, we do have to say, hey, look, we just can't start till there's funding. But at the moment, we're not at that stage, which is really good. So we get lots of quotes, as I'm sure you all do in the room, but I just thought it's quite a long one, but I really love this one. It's actually from here in Melbourne, one of Carol's runners, uh, Nick. And Nick's 14, so we all know what 14 year olds are like these days. And uh, basically Nick's saying that uh, before he started parkrun, he was just addicted to his Xbox uh, and didn't know anything about it outside. And his brother, who'd been living over in the UK, had been doing parkrun there, came back to Australia, came back to Melbourne and said, Nick, get off the couch, you're coming with me to, to Albert Parkrun. And now the little fella's hooked. Uh, I'm friends with him on Facebook and all he's doing every time he's uploading running photos. And I'm sure Carol knows him, knows him well. But uh, this is a 14-year-old guy, so if we're being able to change behaviours of 14-year-olds, it's a really good sign for, I guess, the benefits that Parkrun's bringing to the community and, and future health, health initiatives. So, just some nice photos there. So we've got uh, Albert Park there, that's Main Beach, that's Cooma and that's New Farm. So some just nice little <coughs> holiday snaps. Uh, we get, so we get a little bit of media coverage, which is always good. That's Newey there. And so, to keep it brief, my message for all you uh, who are here today is if you're not using your local parkrun event to promote your race, you should be, because we really want to help you out. Uh, and, and something like 80% of park runners are not coming from a club background or an athletics background or a track and field background. So there's this whole sort of um, demographic of people who are running, but they're not from your traditional running background. You know, they're not reading Run for Your Life or Runners World or whatever is the case. They're just coming along and participating. And then you can you can find these people through park run. Um, if there isn't already a park run in your local community, then if you maybe set one up, uh, you can talk to me about that, or you might know someone who would want to set one up in that community, because what it does is it's more people running, it creates this great community environment, and these people will become your customers for your races. So that was all from me today. Um, my email address is tim at parkrun.com, so it's really easy. Um, if you did want to uh, find out more about Parkrun um, outside of today, then you can get me on that. But other than that, uh, I'll answer any questions that, that may be on the floor. Yep. So they have the same course every week and the same. Yes. Yeah, so same when we set up a park, same. yeah. So that when we set up a, a park run event, it's the same time and the same course every week. Which to seasoned runners might sound pretty boring, but what we're doing is we're creating uh, an event that's part of people's uh, weekend fabric or their routine. They just know that, as I said, they don't have to go back on a computer and just check what time is park run and where's park run this weekend. They just know, turn up with your barcode, 8 a.m., 7.59, just out the front here, uh, and you can, you can do your park run every Saturday. Can I, I'll just forget what uh, Tim's saying. <laughs> Park run quite well, uh, both at Athletic Victoria. Also for Melbourne Marathon too, you guys have to see this is not a threat. This, as Tim says, is a new market that's coming into the running world. They will be your customers, okay? They will be your customers. Just, you do it properly, uh, you don't throw things down their throats, you offer that soft introduction to the world of running, and I found it's worked brilliantly for us. Uh, Carol gave me the opportunity to speak for Melbourne Park Runners several times. As we lead into the Melbourne Marathon training series, they started to turn up. And I know a lot ran yesterday. So, and a lot of these people, as Tim says, they weren't running six months ago. So it's a new field. We've also worked in strongly with the South Melbourne Athletic Club, so even as an Athletic Victoria aspect, where you might not think they're interested in that, and this is a strong thing for the MAs, these people could and do see a new world of athletics as well, because we give them a soft introduction by humanising that word athletics and not being, it's all about track and field, it's actually about starting at this level and seeing the progression through. So I'm a, a very strong supporter of Parkland, I love what they're doing, I love the website is just 
massive world. Oh, I'm a park runner myself, so I love to go and see my age rating. I'll fly up to the age group. So I'm, I'm, I'm floating up that. And it really is a great concept. As I said, it's not a threat to any of you guys. It's something you work with. And it will just build this community all the time. Thanks, Tim. Park. Is it always on a Saturday morning or is it? Yeah, park runs always Saturday morning all over the world. The time does change. In Queensland, we, we run at 7 a.m. Uh, in uh, New South Wales and Victoria and Western Australia, it's 8 a.m. In Tassie, when we launch, it's going to be 9 a.m. Um, in the UK, it's 9 a.m. In Iceland, it's 11 a.m. So it depends where you're going to be. Yeah, yeah John, yeah. I was just saying, yeah, we're launching um, next month in Lonnie. And it's been quite good. We've um, been able to run a few fun runs. <coughs> It's not competitive to us. So what's happened the last few while? We're pretty close with the Mont City Council. The mayor's going to be there to launch it. And what the council's done for us, they've actually upgraded under a five-day track for us, and they've actually put nice granite corner marks in. So we work pretty close to the council. We would probably that probably wouldn't have happened. We've had five trying the track. They've actually put the track in. Mm -hmm. for us. So it's pretty well. Okay. That's right. Yeah, hi. Um, we're saying that it's very sustainable for the use of volunteers. Um, volunteers are uh, not necessarily sustainable resource, you know, if you wear them out, and especially if you're doing something weekly. Yeah. What's the expectation and how many people are you talking about? Okay, you can run a park run event with six people probably. Um, so the, the, the roles that are involved are really simple. Like you, you, everything that you do at a parkrun event can be taught on the morning, so there's no additional training required. Um, the event director position, I mean, probably talk to these three here. Um, maybe just Gareth is down. Gareth is the uh, event director of, has been of New Farm Parkrun, and he's now transitioning to a different event and to a national operations role with me. So. I'm sorry, Gareth, and then Russell uh, from Ginadera in Canberra, and then Carol from, from Albert Park here. Um, maybe have a chat to them over a cup of coffee, but when we first started Parkrun here, my biggest concern was, are we going to get enough volunteers? I was really worried about it. And they are falling from the trees at Parkrun. It is, uh, I know that might sound really strange to all you guys who really struggle to get volunteers, but I think it's because it's, we're free, you know? Like, people are really happy to give their time because we're a free event. Um, I think you know, it's all about fostering that community within. Like, we're a big family, basically. And maybe Gareth, so you want to say something? I want to add to that. Well, we, um, a new farm, we originally had a uh, false start because we couldn't get enough volunteers to get started. Um, but once we, we run our first event, we had to come out of the woodworks, and, and now we've got about 250 volunteers, and, and we've been running for about a year. So. For, for us, we're in, in quite a good position that when people want to volunteer, they always say, I want to volunteer this Saturday. Um, we're in a position where we, we're booking about five weeks in advance, so, so we're, we're in quite a good spot there. We, we have also our own um, software called the, the Volunteer Management uh, System, which is uh, the event directors use it to roster the volunteers, and, and it takes care of these things for them, like reminder emails to the volunteers, hey, you're on this Saturday, just remember. Uh, it lets them know what their role is going to be, and it also sends them a thank you uh, email at the end, and they get points as part of our point system. So we do those things to, to recognise the volunteers as well. And we randomly give them added ass gear and things like that. We, we don't try and incentivise them to be a volunteer because we want them to do it for the right reason. So there's no sort of volunteer 10 times and you get 100 bucks or anything like that. Uh, but we're really lucky in that sense and that the, the parkrun community get that we can't do it without, without them. And we, so we, we always announce if every runner volunteered three times a year, we don't, we're fine. So that's the way we, we approach it. Yeah, the other thing you need to is they come to you three times a year that gives them 49 opportunities to run. So yeah. So and that's what we're doing. Yeah. All right, thanks very much, Tim. Oh. That was um, yeah. very good. Yes, yeah. yeah. I just want to just wanted to give Tim the opportunity to speak. There's a bit of a buzzword these days, park run, just to explain what it actually is and how it can work. Um, before we touch, uh, go